to where I end and you begin to the place where I don't know exactly how the story will go in your love in your love I can finally breathe I can finally Good morning, and welcome to Unity Center of Woodstock, Illinois. I'm Reverend Ann, and I will be handling our platform duties for today. If this is your first visit here, we welcome you and hope that you enjoy our service. We tend to be a very friendly bunch and um, would love to meet with you afterwards if, if, uh, if you are available to stay. We do a fellowship after service and would love to have you join us. And now let's begin with an opening prayer, shall we? Dear God, we feel and welcome your presence in our sanctuary and in our hearts as we join together to open our hearts and our mind to the presence, your presence in our life. This morning we are most grateful for this day filled with warmth and beauty that surrounds us and guides us, heals us, and takes care of us in all ways, in all of our daily activities. Knowing that we are always in our perfect right place leads us to our highest good, always, in all ways. And so it is. Amen. And we're going to move right into our five principles. And if you would join me, please. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. The Christ spirit lives within me. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. I experience God's presence and power through prayer and meditation. My faith into action by demonstration. <clears throat> Unity Spiritual Center is more spiritual than re... Did I just say Unity Spiritual Center? Hmm, that's right. <laughs> All of a sudden, it was looking twice. <laughs> we are certainly more religious than spiritual. More spiritual than religious. I'm going to get that turned around yet. <laughs> it also reminds us that there is a Christ presence that is within us and available for us to be using in our life and on our path. We provide the tools that one needs to do that without really giving you step-by-step -step things that you have to do to make it happen, we know that that comes from within you. At Unity, we also respect all religions and do not discourage any particular practice that supports your best and highest interests. You are welcome to be who you are and be part of who we are as well. And now we are going to do our tithes and offerings. This is that special time in our service 
when we give our tithes and offerings. If you are in the sanctuary with us, please take out your gift and place it in your hands. If you are viewing with us online, you might visit the webpage at Unity, unitywoodstock.org. You'll find the donate button or click on the Joy of Giving tag that is in the uh, Facebook feed. And I invite you to take your gift in your hand, hold it to your heart if you like, as we affirm our tithes and offerings prayer for today. If you would join me, please. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I receive. Amen. The collection basket is at the back, at the end of the aisle, that you might drop that off on your way out. And um, that's it for that. So now I would like to take a moment to introduce our tech masters and music team. We have Joe, Joe, Joe and uh, Kim Joswiak, George Meligallan, and on piano, yes. <laughs> Give them a big hand, because they do so much here. And get it all working correctly. <laughs> and our special music today is with Lori Meligallan. So thank you so much. And I'm going to let you go into that now. And let's go ahead and introduce our special guest. Pardon? Our special guest speaker today. Oh, you know what? Thank you Don't for you that. That's a, <laughs> that's a good thing to do. We do have a special guest today. And that is our speaker, Reverend Elizabeth Mora. Elizabeth, ha yes. <laughs> Elizabeth has a passion for unity, and she's been in, in unity for over 20, 40 years. I was going to say that couldn't be possible. 40 years now already, yes. <laughs> um, and one little tidbit that she did give me is that uh, this is her first time in Woodstock, but it happens to also be the favorite place and the favorite movie of her husband, Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she's very much interested in theater and music and uh, plays and that sort of thing. She's so she's definitely in the theatrical area. And she is currently a minister at large in this area and um, helping out wherever. She started at um, Fox Valley, thank you for that, and uh, lastly was at Northwest, Unity Northwest, which by the way is where Reverend Tom and Reverend Mary Patrice are today, so there's a little switch going on here. Okay, thank you. We will hear from you in a little bit. Thank you. And Lori? Yes. This song is called God Within Me. I love with the heart of God within me. I sing with the voice of God within me. I rest in the peace of God within me. Everything, everything Everything. Mm -hmm. 
God's within me. I'm wondering if you have a secret. Some of you just panicked. I wonder if you have a secret like I used to have a secret many, many years ago. And I finally realized that when I shared that secret with other people, the burden lifted. So today you're gonna unpack your deepest secrets and tell everybody in the room. No, we're not gonna do that. But I am going to ask you to think about if you have one particular secret like I do and like I did about I don't really meditate. I think I do. I say I do. I have the intention of it, but I'm really basically an aspirational meditator. Anybody else in that bucket? Anybody brave enough to raise their hand? Okay, about half the room has raised their hand. So many, many years ago, actually, back at Fox Valley Unity, I had been in Unity probably 10 years. And of course, we meditated every Sunday, just like you do here, right? For about five minutes, maybe, maybe 10. And then one day, a traveling preacher came through. Oh, those traveling preachers. They caused such trouble. Mary, Patrice, and Tom, they're not going to know what to do next week. So this traveling preacher came through, and he caused some trouble. And he showed me an even deeper way to meditate, Vipassana meditation. His name was Reverend Robert Brummett. I don't know if any of you are familiar with him. If you've been in Unity a while, he's written a lot of great books. And we had a meditation retreat on a Saturday, and that's the weekend that changed my life for meditation. Being with a master meditator, if you will, and he led us through over and over again, meditation period and talk, meditation period and talk. So it was the most meditation I'd probably ever done in one sitting, maybe more than my entire life combined on one Saturday. Because I'm like, yeah, I meditate. I come to church every Sunday. Five minutes, check the box. That makes me a meditator. And it does on one level, but it sort of misses the point on another level. And so since then, probably 30 some years, a deeper relationship with meditation. Now, if you're struggling with meditation, this is not good news for you. You're like, oh my gosh, she's gonna go for it. She's gonna poke the meditation bear. So how many of you have a struggle here and there with meditation? Anybody struggle? Okay, many of us. Who's got it mastered? Does anyone feel like they are a really solid meditator? We could leave you in this room for an hour, no problem. No, okay, all right. So we're about where I thought we were and which is where I can be at times and where I was. So would you like to move forward just a little bit? Maybe just a little bit. It's all about baby steps. I'm not gonna leave you for an hour. But I am going to leave you with your own mind for a minute and then maybe five minutes and maybe a little bit more today. So that's why we're not doing meditation right away because we're going to talk just a little bit about it. Here's the thing about meditation. It's about experience. I can talk to you. You can read about it. That's the other part of it, right? I had read a lot of books about meditation and done this much meditation. I certainly hope that that's not how my doctors operate. They've read a lot, but they haven't done a lot. So I realized that after seeing the inner peace that I experienced firsthand with Robert, I thought, I want what that guy's got. And so I began this journey. And it's not an easy journey, and it's a long journey. Well, boy, I just really sold it for you, didn't I? Yeah, it's going to take a while. you got to kind of work at it. But the work at it isn't that much work. It's really the letting go, correct? I'm, I bet you all kind of know that. It's not something that you have to get out the barbells for here. 
You don't have to walk around the block 20 times. All you need to do is sit. Get on the cushion, as they say. Get your butt on the cushion. And you may not have a cushion, that's okay, whether it's a chair or the floor, or whatever position you do it in. The key is consistency. Every day, a little bit. How little? I believe that you can start with one second a day. Can you give yourself one second a day? That little, because if you're at zero or you're at just on Sunday, how about if every day, first thing, you flip your legs over the side of the bed, and before you even wake up, you say, I'm going to do at least one second, and you sit. And one second isn't going to be one second. It's probably going to be five seconds or 10 seconds or even maybe 30 seconds. So look at you. You've already made progress, and you haven't even started. I've just taken you from one to 30 seconds on your first try. Now, why is meditation so important? A question that Unity answers over and over again. We have this cool thing, an online listing of many Unity quotes. So all you have to do is type into this certain program a word, meditation, God, the absolute, and you'll get quotes from 50 or so different Unity authors. So let me give you a couple of them. Great quotes from Unity authors on why you should meditate. You ready? Emily Cady. Oh, don't we love Emily Cady. She says, everyone must, ma must make time for daily quiet meditation. In daily meditation lies the secret power. No one can grow in either spiritual knowledge or power without it. She was pretty tough, Emily. She didn't leave any wiggle room here like, this is sort of optional, and gee, we really hope that you'll do it, and come on. It was like, hey, this is the secret, and you ain't going anywhere spiritually without it. Now that can feel sometimes a little bit like, ugh, you know, guilt-inducing. Oh shoot, I've not been really doing it. I guess I'm really not doing this well. Now I feel bad about myself. No. This is a blame-free, guilt-free, shame-free zone. I hope that any time you're in a spiritual setting like this, and even if it isn't set up that way, for you set up any personal growth that it is blame-free, shame-free and guilt-free. Make it light, an experiment, an exploration. So look at yourself and say, okay, where's my meditation practice at? Maybe where would I like it to be? How fun can I make it to get there instead of let me beat myself up for what I've not been doing? I did a little bit of that after I met Robert. I felt really bad, like, I've been meditating wrong for tw 10 years already. Shoot. But that's not helpful. Everything that you do is helpful. Every step that you take is helpful for your body. Every step that you take in meditation is helpful for your soul, for your spirit, and for your body. Find me a problem in the world today that they don't offer meditation as part of the solution. Cancer, meditation centers are now connected with cancer centers. Any psychological issues that you have, stress with a relationship, anything that's going on that could be lifted up, meditation will help. Who wouldn't do that? It's like drinking water every day. It helps everything in your life. Water, meditation. So let's do a little, shall we? I'm gonna stop talking about it, because that ain't it. That's just the finger pointing at the moon. There's only the doing of it. So I invite you, as I'm sure you do most Sundays, all Sundays, to assume your meditation posture, whatever that is for you. We're going to start with a short time of meditation. 
and I invite you to gently close your outer eyes if that works for you or to hold a gentle gaze to allow the music to guide you and to notice that the breath begins to regulate. I am breathing. As I notice the breath, I'm present. I am present. Breathing in, breathing out. One focus on this moment, this breath. I watch as it comes and goes on its own. There is no need to effort. I breathe in, I breathe out, and I rest in the silence. continue to breathe as I move toward ending this time of meditation taking a moment to notice and take stock of what's just occurred for learning on my journey of meditation I scan my body, my thoughts, and I listen and notice how is it in my world in this moment. And so it is. It's important to embody the practice. It's kind of the cutting edge of unity, if you will, at this moment, that we're really moving into an understanding of our teachings and how we live them and how we feel them and notice them through the sensations in our body. There was a time when the body wasn't discussed as much it was kind of this burden that we had, that we just had to think our way out of. And not all teachers taught that way, but I learned some things that way, and by gosh, I've even been up here preaching that way sometimes. 
And now I've moved into this newer understanding, a broader, expansive understanding of wholeness that includes everything. And Robert Brummett is one of the teachers that he wrote a whole book on wholeness. And so let's incorporate the body into this meditative experience, which was different than how I was taught it. You know, it was more about clear the mind. I know the poor camera's got to catch up with me. I just moved. Sorry to the folks online, but you're looking at a beautiful picture of the vase, and, and soon it will come to me. There we go. They're doing a great job. It's just I threw them off. So the body, oh, the body. Notice the sensations in your body. Right now, what are some sensations that anybody feels? Go ahead, yell it out. In your body, what do you notice? Calm. Peace. Warm. Nice. Feel into the body. And where do you feel calm, warm peace? Can you locate that? See, I'm, I'm giving it mine away, right? I'm holding this. So you're, hold, you're feeling something here. Real common to feel something here. Anybody else notice a physical sensation anywhere in your body? Stomach. Okay. Heart. Mm. So everyone, again, take this time to really notice that because this is the gift. I think it's the gift that Emily was talking about, is that if I can be present enough, my body, in addition to the mind, but my body is talking to me. It is telling me something. And I had a profound experience of this the other day where I had been going through some stuff, working on letting go of some old thoughts, like we all do, and I'd had a breakthrough. I had a breakthrough where I had this great aha. And usually that's where it stops. Yaha! I realized the thought that I was holding that was keeping me back. It was fear. Go figure. So, hey, I let go of some fear on something in my life. And I was ready to charge off. You know, okay, I got that fixed again. Check the box. Problem solved. Another level of enlightenment. And then I did something different this time. I actually stopped. And I just let myself sit in that. And I realized that still underneath, like there was a little bit of shakiness. I was so excited to let go of this burden, of this grudge, that I was like, oh, I'm so excited. And then a little bit of sadness came. Oh, man, I, my throat got a little tight, and I realized I didn't realize how much I had been holding. And I'm getting goosebumps right now telling you about it. So it's this very small moment sitting in a McAllister's with my husband drinking sweet tea. And I was like, stop, stop talking. Everybody stop, right? I, I got to take this in. And that's what it can be sometimes when the realization hits you, when this moment um, and all of these moments of meditation have helped me identify, oh, my mind's ready, I'm ready to move off, and the body's like, wait, 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 feel this. Don't just know it. <sighs> You're letting go of fear. You're at a new level. You're seeing this a new way. Meditation puts us in the present moment. With your breath, it's really, really hard to be anywhere else but right here. That's why we use the breath. You can use a candle. You can use a mantra. They say there's over 400 different ways to meditate. You can do a walking meditation. And I do all of those different things at times. And what's most powerful for me has been this Vipassana meditation of coming back to the moment, coming back to the moment. Now, did anyone have thoughts come up in that last meditation? Anybody's mind end up going somewhere? Yep, yep, went somewhere. Did you realize that it had gone somewhere in the meditation? Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. 
someone near you, you're with someone, have them pat you on the back. Because why? Because that was your moment of enlightenment. That is the moment of enlightenment. We think the moment of enlightenment is lotus position with a mudra. Pure silence, everything's gone. That's what I picture as enlightenment. Enlightenment is actually when your mind has gone off and you recognize it, bing, and you bring it back. That's the moment. So when you're working out, the best analogy I've come up with is weightlifting. So when I've got my little barbell here, this isn't building the muscle. This is building the muscle, right? And then I've got a rest. So everything's perfect down here. This is the silence. And then, oh, I had a thought. I got to come back up to the silence. So the good news is every time that you find yourself meditating badly, you're doing it right. What great news. Richard and Mary Alice Jafola say, meditation is an exercise that should be practiced faithfully if we would see good results. The benefits from this daily experience cannot be overestimated and will be readily proved once it becomes a habit. Amen, amen, amen. Those used to be words. I read them now, and I haven't read this one in a while. I read that, and I'm going, yes, yes, yes. And it did take time. It does take time. You know, there is something magic about 10,000 hours, they say, or 10 years in a practice. Yoga people will tell you this. Musicians will tell you this. Something at the 10-year mark. And I swear, a light went off after about 10 years. And then another kind of raising up happened after about another 10 years, which is about how long my serious practice has been. And I'm not telling you that I'm some perfect meditator. Of course not. But it is so ingrained in me now as a habit. Just like first thing, I drink at least eight ounces of water in the morning. I spend at least five minutes, and that's a bare minimum of meditation to get in touch with the I am that you were singing about, the I am that is in here, because there's so much going on out here that it's so easy to lose track. And Charles Fillmore himself said, a daily half hour of meditation will open up the mind to a consciousness of the inner one and will reveal many things that are hidden from the natural person. There is an awareness that happens in that meditation that you just can't fake. So let's do it again. Let's talk less, Elizabeth, and do more. Once again, moving your body, putting your hands where they feel most natural, Closing the eyes, straightening the spine. It's a time of alertness and relaxation. And so this time we stretch. We stretch ourselves for a few minutes of silence. We let the mind do what it does, and we come back to the silence whenever the thoughts come in, not pushing, but allowing them to move on. When the body has some tension, gently letting go of any tension, to explore this silence that gives us such a gift for a few minutes of silence.
Noticing the body, the mind, the space. I return once again to a more awake, alert state, gently opening the eyes, and so it is. Five minutes, four, maybe that was about four minutes, which is a long time in a church service, isn't it? It feels like a little bit long, and then also like it just got started. Did your mind wander? Mine did. I counted at least three times that it went off. And what I noticed is after talking with you, I was so much more gentle with myself when I realized it. Instead of jerking back, I thought, oh, there it is. And I gently brought myself back. And I realized that I was using a muscle. And then I let all of that go. All that chit-chat in my mind, I let it go. Today, you have already built up a little muscle for meditation. In Lessons in Truth, Emily Cady says, practice the presence of God just as you would practice music. No one would ever dream of becoming a master in music except by spending some time daily alone with music. That's my invitation for you to continue what we've done here today, to take it out of talking about it and knowing about it and really living it bit by little bit. Whether you ever get to a point where you feel like a master and you can go take a 10-day Vipassana silent meditation retreat and not talk for 10 days. If you don't ever get there, that's okay. I've given up that dream. I used to think I was going to do that in this lifetime, but I don't think so. But I'm really grateful for what happens in my little house, on my little cushion, in my little corner of the world. And I hope that you can expand that even 30 seconds in the morning for yourself, bit by little bit. Mary uh, May Rowland, who used to run Silent Unity for a long time, said it may take years to learn to enter the silence, but we have to begin. We have to take time every day to be still, keep practicing, keep practicing. And then you can let go of that dirty little secret that I'm not a very good meditator. Keep practicing, and you will be. Namaste. Waiting for prayers If I just heard the call
but I don't hear a thing. And then, in accidental stillness, I hear myself and God sing. searching at all. Now that I hear the call, I'm no longer searching at Thank you, Reverend Elizabeth, and thank you, Lori. That was awesome. I find out that I'm probably doing it correctly, <laughs> which kind of came as a surprise. It's like I'm thinking I'm falling asleep, but I'm actually not. I oh, well. <laughs> so um, we have um, a couple of announcements. Not many today, but a couple. Um, the Pine Ridge... Retreat in um, June is still taking place, and there is still space on that, I understand, for anybody that might be interested. And uh, Mind Shifters is still going on on Tuesday evenings. Way of Mastery is the second and fourth Saturday. Um, and the Course in Miracles Made Easy is still taking place on Wednesday evenings. And that's in its last stages, I believe. Okay, if there's anything I missed, let me know and we'll bring it in. Um, other than that, I think it's time for our prayer of protection. If you will join me with that. The light of God surrounds, surrounds us. Let's stand, yeah. The light of the God surrounds us. The love of God love unfolds God us. Unfolds the power of God protects us. us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So it is. And if we can just stay for... Please join us for fellowship afterwards. Mm -hmm.